Welcome. Let's look at the pelvic joint and the pelvic ligaments. The pelvic joints are the joints that link the pelvic bones together. We've described this in our previous lecture. You can go and check up our lecture on the bony pelvics, where we say that the pelvic is made up of pieces of bones that are joined together. So we have the pelvic gidu, which is made up of three bones fused together as one. So we have one on the right and one on the left. And we have the pelvic spine at the back, which is a continuation of the vertebral column. These are bones joined together. So let's look at the joint that the pelvic presents. The first one is the lumbosacral joint. The lumbosacral joint, what we need to do is to break down the name, which means that this bone joins the lumbar vertebra with the sacral bone. This is the lumbar vertebra. And this is the sacral bone. And this is where the joint is, linking the two bones together. Then we have the sacroiliac joint. That means this joint joins the sacrum with the ilium. And this is the sacrum. This is the ilium. This is the joint. That means it links the sacrum with the ilium. Then we have the pubic symphysis. The pubic symphysis connects the pelvic bone anteriorly, and it joins the pubic bone on one side to the pubic bone on the other side. And the specific region where this joint is formed on the pubic bone is on the body of the pubic bone. So this is the pubic symphysis. Then we have the sacrococcygeal joint. The sacrococcygeal joint means it joins the sacrum with the cossex. And this is where the joint is, linking the sacral bone with the cossex. So these joints are further reinforced by ligaments. So we have ligaments running and crossing these joints just to further create additional strength and support for the joints. So we'll be looking at this during the course of this lecture. So let's look at the joints one after the other. For the lumbrosacral joint, it connects the last lumbar vertebra. We know that we have five lumbar vertebra bones, so we still have some extending upward. So this is the fifth lumbar vertebra, and this is where the lumbrosacral joint is formed, where it connects with the sacrum. So this is the lumbosacral joint. If we have to classify this joint, we classify it as a cartilaginous joint. We know that the vertebral column are linked by the intervertebral disc. And intervertebral disc is a form of cartilage. For us to classify this cartilaginous joint as either primary or secondary cartilaginous joint, the basis for doing this is the primary cartilaginous joints are mostly seen to have ossified at the mature or the secondary stage. Why the secondary cartilaginous joint will still be seen with cartilage deposited within the joint. So if you look at the intervertebral disc, we see that we still have patches of cartilage deposited within it. The kind of movement that this joint exhibits is flexion, extension, and a bit of lateral flexion. The next joint is the sacroiliac joint. And this joint, we've said that it connects the sacrum with the ilium. This joint is a paired form of joint, which means that we have one on the right and one on the left. But they still act as a single unit. So this is the sacroiliac joint formed between the sacrum and the ilium. This joint is a synovial type of joint, which means that it has synovial gadgets embedded within it. And you see that the pattern by which this joint is formed is irregular. The sacral articular surface is covered by iline cartilage, while on the ilium articular surface, we have fibrous type of cartilage. So we have different types of cartilage lining the articular surfaces of this joint. We should also take note of this. The pubic symphysis. The pubic symphysis is formed in the anterior part of the pelvis, as we have said. It is formed between the body of the right pubic bone and the body of the left pubic bone. It is also a cartilaginous type of joint. And for that classifying it, we say that it is a secondary type of cartilaginous joint. Because if you take the pelvis, you will still see the cartilage around the region where the joint is formed. And this joint is formed along the median plane. It is not like the sacroiliac joint that we have on the lateral side. So this is the pubic symphysis. Also to add that the articular surfaces of the pubic bone on the right and that of the left is covered by iodine cartilage. So we have iodine cartilage in this region marked in green, while the central cartilage that actually forms the structural connection between the two bones is formed by fibrocartilage. 
This is also referred to as interpubic disc. So we have two types of cartilage around this region. We have the hyaline cartilage lining the articular surface, while we have the fibrocartilage forming the main connecting cartilage of this joint. Then we have the sacrococcygeal joint. From the name, it means it's joined the sacrum with the cossex. And this is joined by the intervertebral disc, just as we have in the upper vertebral column. And this is the sacrococcygeal joint formed between the sacrum and the cossex. It is also a cartilaginous type of joint, as we see, between the lumbar and the sacrum. This joint tends to be obliterated in old age. Talking about the ligaments, we've described the different types of joints that we have, the lumbosacral, the sacroiliac, the pubic symphysis and also the sacrococcygeal joint. All these joints are need to be strengthened by ligaments. And that is why we need to study the ligaments of the pelvis because they help to reinforce or strengthen these joints. It also play vital role during the process of childbirth. So let's look at the lumbosacral joint. We've said that the lumbosacral joint is a joint that connects the lumbar, that's the last lumbar vertebra with the sacrum. So the ligaments that help to strengthen this joint include the anterior longitudinal ligament, the anterior longitudinal ligament from the name is seen in the anterior part of the joint, and this is the anterior longitudinal ligament. You see it connecting the fifth lumbar vertebra and the sacrum. Anterior longitudinal ligament forms an anterior extension upward. So we have the continuation of this ligament extending across the anterior part of the vertebral column, thereby connecting the vertebral bones together along their anterior region. So we have the posterior longitudinal ligament, and this is the posterior longitudinal ligament, just like the anterior longitudinal ligament, but this is seen within the vertebral canal. So this is the vertebral canal of the lumbar vertebra, and you see the posterior longitudinal ligament also connecting the fifth lumbar vertebra and the sacrum, but posteriorly. So you see them lining it behind, but are seen within the vertebral canal. Then we have the lateral lumbosacral ligament. This is the lateral lumbosacral ligament. And from the name lateral, it means it connects the joint laterally. And we have the interspinous ligament. The ligament can be seen at the posterior part of the lumbosacral joint. So we need to view it through this image. This is the sacrum, and this is the fifth lumbar vertebra. We have the fourth, the third, then it goes upward. The interspinous ligament, connect the spinous process of the vertebral bone together. This is the spinous process of the fifth lumbar vertebra. So this ligament connects this spinous process to the spinous process of the inferior vertebral bone. So this is the ligament. So connecting the two spines together at the posterior part. Also, the supraspinous ligament, from the name supra, it means above the spinous process. You see it's connecting the tip of the spinous process together with the tip of the spinous process of the distal vertebra. This is another ligament that helps to connect the lumbar vertebra with the sacrum. And this is the ligament. Then we have the iliolumbar ligament. The iliolumbar ligament is an accessory type of ligament because when we talk about the ligament that helps to connect the lumbar vertebra with the sacrum, this forms like a supporting kind of ligament because it does not connect the lumbar with the sacrum. But what it does is that it connects the lumbar vertebra with the ilium. And that is where we have the formation of the name iliolumbar ligament. So this is the iliolumbar ligament. Even though it is not connecting directly, the lumbar vertebra with the sacrum, but it gives a supporting connection to the lumbar vertebra by connecting it with the ilium. So we try to classify it as an accessory lumbosacral ligament. Anchoring the sacroiliac joint. This is the sacroiliac joint connecting the sacrum with the ilium. And on the posterior side, we also look at the ligament that helps to reinforce this joint at the back. So on the anterior side first, we have the anterior sacroiliac ligament. From the name, it means it reinforces the joint in the anterior part. So we have fibers running this way, connecting the ilium with the sacrum anteriorly. Then we have the interosseous ligament. The interosseous ligament are short ligaments and they are seen connecting the sacrum and the ilium at the posterior part of the sacroiliac joints. 
and this is what they look like. They run perpendicular to the joints. Overlying this at the back, you see that these are short ligaments. Then we now see another form of ligament that is overlying on the interosseous ligament, and that is the posterior sacroiliac ligament. And this is the way the posterior sacroiliac ligament runs. Deep to this ligament is where you see the interosseous ligament. So let's look at the accessory ligament of the sacroiliac joint. Just as we have in the lumbosacral joint, where we said that the iliolumbar ligament is its accessory ligament that helps to reinforce the joint. So looking at the sacroiliac joint, we also have accessory ligament that help to also support this joint. We've talked about the ligament of the sacroiliac joint in our previous slides, but these are just accessory ligament that helps to give support to the other sacroiliac ligaments. So apart from this accessory ligament giving support to the sacroiliac joint, it also helps to transform the greater and the lesser sciatic notch into the greater and the lesser sciatic foramen. So let's drive into this to see how the two ligaments that is termed the accessory ligament of the sacroiliac joint is able to do this. Looking at the pelvics from behind, we already talked about the greater sciatic notch, and this is the greater sciatic notch. We said that it is a part of the ilium at the posterior side. We discussed this in our previous lecture on the bony pelvis. You can go and check that hope to upgrade your knowledge in this area. And we said that this starts to the greater sciatic notch. We also have a smaller or a lesser sciatic notch below it, which is a region of the ischium. So this is the greater sciatic notch, and this is the lesser sciatic notch. This are transformed into foramen by the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous ligaments. So let's look at how this ligament run. So we have the sacrospinous ligament from the name. All we need to do is to break the name down also, which means that it connects the sacrum to the spine of the ischium. And this is the sacrum to the spine of the ischium. And this is the way it runs, connecting the sacrum to the ischium, and this is the sacrospinous ligament. So this ligament is one of the accessory ligaments of the sacroiliac joint, which is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium. But it does not have a direct connection with the sacrum and the ilium, but connects the sacrum with the spine of the ischium. So this is the way it also runs in the lumbrosacral joints by not giving direct connection between the two bones, but of course, connecting one of the bones to another neighboring bone. So that's the way it also applies here. And another thing is that the sacrospinous ligament also helps to transform this greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen by forming this boundary. And also we have the sacrotuberous ligament. It means it connects the sacrum with the tuberosity of the ischium. It runs by connecting the sacrum to the tuberosity of the ischium. This also helps to transform this lesser sciatic notch into the lesser sciatic foramen by creating this boundary around it. You can see how these accessory ligaments, even though they help to give structural support to the sacroiliac joint by connecting the sacrum to the neighboring structure, they also help to transform the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch into the greater and the lesser sciatic foramen to allow the passage of structures from the pelvic cavity to the glutal region and also to the lower limb. So you see how they transform this indentation now into a foramen that can now allow structures or guide structure through them, anchoring the pubic symphysis. We've said that the pubic symphysis is created in the anterior part of the pelvic bone. So we have the superior pubic ligament, and this is the superior pubic ligament. And the way they run, connecting the upper region of the pubic symphysis. Then we have the inferior pubic ligament. This is the inferior pubic ligament, or the acquit pubic ligament because it looks like an hack. You see it hacking under the pubic symphysis. Then we have the anterior pubic ligament is seen reinforcing the anterior part of the pubic symphysis. Then we have the posterior pubic ligament. From the name, it means it's seen at the back. So it runs along the posterior part of the pubic symphysis. Anchoring the sacrococcygeal joint, we said that this joint is formed between the sacrum and the cursus. So we also have ligament anchoring this joint. And we have the anterior sacrococcygeal ligament. And this is the anterior sacrococcygeal ligament. We have the posterior sacrococcygeal ligament behind the sacrum and the cursus. Then we have the lateral sacrococcygeal ligament. This lateral sacrococcygeal ligament connects the lateral part of the sacrum to the transverse process of the cursus. 
So it is seen around the lateral margin of the joint. The application, the application is that we know there are several bones held together to form the pelvix. And this pelvix is very important during childbirth process because we say we have a number of ligaments helping to reinforce this joint, thereby giving it strength and also structural support. But during childbirth, there is a release of hormone that is called relaxing. This relaxing helps to soften this ligament, thereby affording it some form of expansion so as to allow the baby to pass through during the process of birth. Thanks for watching this video.